Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, hit the like button and please subscribe. I appreciate it so much. And you are a blessing. Well, we're going to start out with... Guess who? <laughs> Let's get this scooted over a little bit. Make sure everything's going to work well here. And uh, always got to adjust this and adjust that. Sometimes I think I need two computers, and then I'm going, oh no, I don't need no two computers. I can barely get this one done. You know, um, I can fix my own computers. I can fix them better than I can run one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh boy. In an interview that was broadcast on Monday's episode of NBC's Late Night with Seth Myers, Vice President Kamala Harris declared that nobody should be sent to jail for smoking weed. She also stated that Congress needs to take additional action on legalizing marijuana possession so that there's a standard approach to the issue and she encourages people to vote accordingly in the midterm elections in 2022 on the topic of marijuana legal legalization. During a conversation about the possibility of further action and legislation regarding the issue, Harris made the following statement, Well, you know, we've tried so over years to let me just start by saying this. I firmly believe, and the vast majority of Americans concur, that nobody should, must go to prison for smoking weed, right? Don't speak for me, lady. Having established that, we are, to your point, pushing governors and states to follow our lead, pardon persons who have been made illegal, who have been made illegal, illegal, for marijuana possession. The president has been quite explicit on this. In the end, however, just like with a large response, or large number of other problems, if Congress takes action, there will be a standardized response to this problem as well as a large number of other problems. However, Congress needs to take action. There are only 29 days left until the midterm elections. Yay! I encourage you to ask the candidates you support for their position on this topic and vote in accordance with your findings. Now, what gives her the right to speak for everybody? You know? Oh, well. Vice President, I guess, can do just that. Okie dokie. <laughs> well, now guess who we're going to talk about? Biden hit the new lawsuit over student loan power grab. Monday, the Legal Action Fund of the Job Creators Network Foundation sued the Biden administration over its plan to wipe out $10,000 in school debt for millions of people. The conservative, conservative, spit it out, Betty, advocacy group, give up, says that the rule breaks the Administrative Procedure Act's notice and comment, comment requirements. Other people have also sued over the student debt cancellation plan, which leads Pell Grant holders to get out of 20000 in loans. In a statement to the Daily Wire, Elaine Parker, president of the Job Creators Network Foundation, said, the administration's action does nothing to address the root cause of unaffordable tuition, which is greedy and fat colleges that rise tuition far more than inflation every year while sitting on $700 billion in endowments. Colleges need to be held accountable for their high tuition fees, which pay for high CEO salaries. Army of Administrator, Administrator who don't 
do much and resort style amenities. Army of administrator, administrator. That's what it says right here. Who don't do much and resort style amenities. According to the complaint, the Administrative Procedure Act of 1946 makes sure that affected parties can participate in and have an influence on agency decision making early on when the agency is more likely to consider alternative views. Lawyers for plaintiffs Myra Brown and Alexander Taylor, who didn't qualify for full debt cancellation and couldn't talk to the Department of Education, said the policy is meant to help Democrat politicians in the upcoming midterm elections. By putting the burden on taxpayers, including those who didn't go to college or pay back their loans, institutions avoid taking responsibility for the student loan crisis. They are given carte blanche, blanche or carte blanche, uh, car, uh, yeah, well, whatever. They are given to continue the ridiculous, ridiculous pricing. I used to say that word is C A R T E, carte, B L A N C H E, blanche, to continue the ridiculous pricing. Bailing out this debt only kicks the problem down the road. You know, they could find easier words for people to pronounce. <laughs> Car blanche, is that it? Is it French? Car, carte blanche? Ooh, well, all right. <laughs> In addition <laughs> to giving each Bauer $10,000 back, the White House would freeze federal student loan payments till January of 2023 and limit payments to 5% of a Bauer's monthly income. The Congregational Budget Office says that canceling the loan could cost $400 billion and stopping the payments could add another $20 billion. Wow, $20 billion. In a petition, several state attorneys general say that the cancellation of student loans goes against the recent Supreme Court ruling in West Virginia, V.E.P.A., which says the federal agencies can't claim highly sequential power beyond what Congress could be understood to have granted. My, oh my, oh my. This national debt of the United States has gone over 31 trillion. That is bad. That is really bad and sad. For the first time in history, thank you, Biden. Oh, excuse me. This means that each person owes almost $93,000 and each taxpayer almost $247,000. I did this in another video. Republican and Democrat politicians have watched budget deficits grow, but the Biden legislative plan will add more than $4.8 trillion in new deficit spending between 21 and 2031. Are we ever going to recoup? The group said this is on top of the trillions we planned to borrow before Biden assumed office. Excess borrowing will lead to ongoing inflationary pressures. Pressures raise the national debt to a new record by 2030 and quadruple federal interest payments over the next decade or sooner if interest rates rise faster or more than expected. The proceeding is a summary of an article that originally appeared on Daily Wire. So y'all can go check it out, you know. I like to let you all know where these articles come from. And um, because, you know, you need to go read them. And... Uh, No words. No words. Nope. I have no words. Well, I'm going to try one more here. This one here I've got to do. You are not going to believe this one. 
I couldn't hardly believe it when I read it. I don't know. Maybe if you're that familiar with the CIA, you can accept it. I can't, and I'm not into CIA. But CIA is quietly buying up woolly mammoth resurrection tech. I just cannot go along with this. The Intercept recently reported that the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, along with other entities, have been funding a biotechnology company that is trying to bring the woolly mammoth back from extinction. According to the Intercept report, the CIA, which has recently shown an interest in DNA, Sequencing, sequencing and biotechnology, sequencing and biotechnology, has been investing in colossal biosciences through IN-Q-TEL, NQTEL, a non-profit venture capital firm funded by the agency. Colossal co-founder Ben Lamb, L-A-M-M, -M, told The Intercept that the further development of biotechnology and bioeconomy are critical for humanity. Lamb explained that this is important for the federal government to develop biotech and understand what is possible. Last month, the venture capital firm and in QTEL said in a blog post that it's interested isn't in resurrecting, in surrecting the woolly mammoth so much as it is in the technology colossal is developing to do so. Now, if you're getting the drift here, you know where this is headed. In QTEL explained that the de development of SYNBIO, S-Y-N-B-I-O, will lead to advances in our ability to shape both form and function of organisms at the microscopic level, adding that in engineering plants and animals, these challenges must be solved. Colossal Biosciences is using a new gene editing technology from CRISPR to bring back woolly mammoths through DNA extracted from mummified mammoth remains. You get it now? Oh my God. According to its website, the biotech company will revolutionize history, revolutionize history to achieve the de extinction of previous lost species, de extension, extinction of previously lost species revolutionize history. Colossal believes restoring the woolly mammoth could help to deter, D-E-T-E-R, the melting of Arctic permafrost, halting the emission of greenhouse gases stored within it while helping to sol save modern day elephants from extinction. However, not everybody thinks it's such a great idea. Hey, I'm one. Anybody else? Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. In a recent interview, Jeremy Austin, the director of the Australian Center of Asian DNA, described the extinction as fairy tale science that is more focused on media attention than on serious science. Yeah, why don't you work on curing cancer? 
which I got to have a little say here, you know me, years ago, many years ago, from my age now, I read and understood that there has always been a cure for any cancer. But if it was brought out and used, the pharmaceutical companies, hospitals, doctors, they'd go broke. Because cancer is a money maker. So here's some more deriving money from people that have died of cancer that could have been cured. How do these people sleep at night? Honest to goodness sakes, alive. But don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on it. That's just what I remember from years and years ago. But Colossal Ben Lamb says critics are simply not fully informed about the technology. Okay. That's it for now. Mm. I don't know what to think or say. I love my thing. I have no words. But you are a blessing. I'll be back. I'm not done yet. I'll be back. Find my camera button here. Here we go. Laters.